Okay, welcome to your best post show ever, brought to you by the fine folks at Twisted Tea. And we got two Twisted Tea, uh, HEP, presented by Progressive Suzuki Riders here uh, to talk about the brutality of Southwick. Look, Brandon Hartraft, you've probably ridden some Jersey sand pits in your time. Yeah, Even you consider this gnarly. Yeah, this is way different than, honestly, anywhere you can honestly prep for. So uh, they added some rollers today, and I don't feel like that was a good idea. We didn't need them. We, we, you we don't need the rollers? Yeah. So it, it gets... The areas that already form rollers when it's flat, they decide to add rollers, so it just wasn't a good idea. I, I actually know it's not even they added rollers. It was literally John Dowd himself who added rollers, and he was giddily laughing yesterday about how rough the track was going to be. Uh, were you laughing? No. <laughs> uh, okay, Marsh had an awesome uh, weekend last weekend with the top ten overall, and uh, this weekend started with down in a pile and uh, cry for Team Fry who's shooting this because his guy was down there too. He's right in front of me. <laughs> I thought I had a good start, and then, yeah, Jason fell right in front of me, and his body is laying across, and I just locked it up. I'm like, no way I can just, like, stroll over him right now. Okay, so that was nice. Sacrificed my moto for it, but it was worth it. And then um, I'm like, you know what, just regroup, find my flow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click some people off here, get a decent, like, finish, and then crashed, crashed again. Oh. Crashed again, crashed three times, and I just couldn't stay off the ground. So uh, I just kind of beat me up a little bit. I got ate up and spit out. Okay. Uh, any any better for you, Jersey boy? Well, Moto 1, where they added the rollers, decided to crash. Oh, oh okay. Decided now I understand. Crash where the rollers are at. Took the bar to the chest. Second Moto um, was a lot better. It was in around like 10th or 12th to 11th. Cannon passed me. And, dude, Cannon's got some lines, man. It's Oh, he's got to have lines, dude. It's actually impressive how creative he was out there. So, Honestly, if I tried his lines, I probably would have crashed. So it was, it was pretty cool when he passed me. I followed him, and props to him. Yep, that's the local Southwick uh, of the moment, Chris Canning, leading the NESC points. Uh, let's get to our top riders from the – he's got a red play. Yeah, he should have come in with that. Um, Eli Tomek goes one way today in the 450 class. Chase Sexton 2-2 again, just like it was at Redbud. And uh, Aaron Plessinger on the podium. Let's talk to uh, those guys and a couple others post-race. Pretty good uh, first moto today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the day. I mean, it definitely was, I feel like, the most physically demanding day for sure so far this season. So tell me a little bit about It was. It was. Southwick's just known to be a physically tough track, and uh, it, and for sure it was. I think uh, practices started out pretty good. Second t second practice was actually much better for us. Um, got a, got ourselves in a good position, good gate pick. And then the first moto got a good start. Uh, ran there with Kenny and Christian there for a little bit. I ended up going down, and but got back up and uh, made a pass into fourth and just kind of hung there. And that was kind of nice. Um, first moto was, was definitely, I was happy with that. Uh, and the second moto got a good start. Um, I'd say the first half of the race, the first three quarters race was, was definitely, I felt good. Um, but the physically uh, demanding track definitely was kind of, you know, it'd been six years. So it's, I got to be a little bit patient, but I, uh, it's also hard to accept too. You know, you want to, you want to be, you know, you don't ever want to have to like, um, you know, labor at the end, you know, you want to push it hard really to the, but it's just part of the game and part of the part of the sport, and just got to keep, you know, fit, you know, it's not from lack of trying, lack of work. It's just got to keep keep progressing forward. So that was you off the start, right? That's the second moto start. Is that yeah. Jump back on. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk me through that. I'm pretty excited to see the highlight for that one. I want to see what that, that looks dude. like. Did you? I got it. Oh, like I'll be I'll be tuning into Team Fried Monday. <laughs> um, and actually, speaking of Team Fried, me and Jason were in the first turn pile up together two weekends in a row. So I was pretty bummed about the first moto, and uh, we made a gearing change. It was better for the second moto. Um, it almost felt like I had the whole shot, but AP kind of pushed me out, and that's why I had to go on that lane, because AP pushed me out. Um, but yeah, I wasn't letting off, you know, so I just kind of bunny hopped the banners and got back on. Like, kudos to the track crew for, like, actually giving me a spot to get back on, you know. Um, but now it was good to run the pace. Um, it's, it's a whole other level. Like, I have a whole shot in lead laps in the 250 here, and, like, almost one moto's here. Um, and, like running fourth in the 450 class is like a whole nother ball game. So, um, and, and the class is really stacked this year. So it's, it's cool to, to be up there and taste that a little bit and, and get some good momentum going into Millville. Oh yeah, good old Southwick. Eat some sand here. I had to come from behind in Moto One. I kind of, I just had a really bad start. Kind of, kind of got bucked off the bar uh, and spun a lot. I had to come through. Um, <clears throat> But this year it was it was a drier sand, so I actually had a, a better time with my vision here. Sometimes it can be really tough here coming through the pack, 
and today it was it was pretty good. I was able to come through forward, uh, real well in that first moto. Um, yeah, that was moto one. Moto two, AP was hauling the mail. So was Kenny. Had the better start, but it wasn't easier by any means. Um, we were laying down a pace that first half of the race, and then this track just it it beats you up, man. You're just I call it being burgered at the end of the day. You're just done. Um, it's tough to stand up those last couple laps. You said on the podium you definitely felt like that was the best you've rode all, all year. I mean, um, it feels like you just yeah. a tiny little bit more. Yeah. Um, first moto, actually, I got a decent start. And it was, I was riding kind of like a little baby. I wasn't making good passes. I was being conservative. And it cost me. Eli passed me. Um, and then second moto, I just didn't get a good start. And second moto, just didn't get a good start. Um, probably like outside top 10. And then uh, I had to really put a charge on it. I made a lot of good passes. And I was really happy with how I rode. Um, obviously, I didn't win. And Eli made up more points. But um, it's I've just been trying my best. So I think um, I got some stuff to work on. I got to get better at uh, being a little bit more aggressive early and then um, getting better starts as well. So um, if I can do those things, we'll be in a good spot. My riding has been really good. And uh, I'm just excited with where I'm at right now. So uh, I'm looking forward to these next six rounds, all the tracks I love from here on out. And you know what? It's going to be a battle. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's uh, right. You mentioned six rounds. So like we're officially halfway through. Um, how do you feel like kind of today was obviously really, really physically uh, you know, demanding. How do you feel overall still throughout the season? It's, it's actually like usually these middle rounds for me has always been tough. Like I never, I, it's not a lack of motivation, but it's just like those dog days of summer. Like you just kind of, it's hard to like keep it going. But this year, for some reason, I feel like pretty fresh and um, I can really tell like with my attitude usually when you start to get, go downhill a little bit you started getting grumpy and kind of ornery and so far I've been really upbeat and I've been really in a really good headspace this this outdoor season so if we can keep that going um, we'll be good so uh, if you start seeing me a little grumpy though that's when I start to get a little tired but for right now I feel I feel uh, good and fresh and Ready to keep going. Okay, uh, we'll have Aaron Plessinger on the show a little bit later. Uh, we got Mitch Kendra who joined us for our pre-race show yesterday. He hasn't earned his twisted tee yet, but he's working on it. Uh, so the press conference, you were there, Mitch. Uh, kind of interesting, Eli Tomac, really good in the first qualifying session. Not as good in the second, and then awesome in the two motos. It's kind of funny how the bikes change throughout the day. Yeah, like you said, though, obviously we kind of expected the track to be not quite as fast in the second qualifying session. But in the press conference, Eli said they made some bike changes and they didn't work out, so they went back to the bike uh, base setting that they started originally with. But I don't know how they weren't working. He was still the fastest, like, he was still hauling ass and stuff. So oh, yeah. He was, but, yeah, they weren't working, apparently, so. Well, uh, I think he's only fourth or fifth in that second session. So I'm going to tell you how, how Tomac works with the suspension man, Ricky Gilmore. And I don't know if Tomac even knows this, so I hope he doesn't watch this show. But Gilmore told me, he's like, yeah, we start the day with what we think we're going to use. And then in the second practice, we let we, we tried something that we knew probably wouldn't work. But at least for the rest of the day, Eli wasn't going to wonder, what if we tried this? They used that second practice to prove it. Uh, the motos, he's unbelievable, and uh, he's looking really good right now. Yeah, five straight moto wins. Obviously, he's excelled here in the past. Yeah. And like you kind of said earlier, maybe if he does go 1-1, it's not horrible for Sexton. And Sexton was right behind him. But yeah, five straight moto wins for Eli is not looking great for everybody else. And three straight overall wins. I have to look it up. Chase, stay tuned for Redux later in this week. But yes. the first to three overall wins... There's got to be some sort of in increase in the stats in the championship-wise. So, Yeah, because you had that 30 out of 50 years, the first to two wins the title. Uh, first to three, we're probably talking like 40 out of 50. It's going to be significant, and the points, there's only one point between them now. Yeah, and again, Sexton, he finished 2-2, two -two, so his moto podium continues. He's only one uh, finish still fourth at Thunder Valley. He's been first or second, everything else. So he's not going to let Eli have it easily, but like you said, Eli's just on another level right now. And he said in the press conference, too, he's heading back to tracks he's comfortable at. And he's, you know, he likes it here. Millville, everybody kind of likes that track. You know, Dilly, he's ridden well there. Bud's Creek and everything like that. But Sexton also said he rode well at Washuga last year. Yeah. So he's kind of like battling back like, hey, man, I rode well here too. So it really, I mean, halfway through this championship one point, like you said, it's really interesting. I can't wait to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So. Yeah, I feel like this track is the one that had the biggest swing in Tomac's direction. Uh, uh, Sexton actually won the overall at Washuga last year. Tomac was crazy fast late in the day. Uh, but it, it's going to be interesting with only one point between them. 
And uh, we've been talking about motocross the nations the last couple of weeks. Uh, I am driving the bus hardcore that Jason Anderson should be put on a 250. The Pro Circuit bikes, Shimoda's proving they're fine, they're good. We don't have to have a star racing Yamaha. There are other good 250s. Uh, I mean, obviously, the Lawrence Brothers bike is good. You actually asked Sexton if he would ride a 250. Yeah, I was curious. Just we asked Eli a little bit last week with Redbud, and I said, hey, man, like, what's your thoughts on it? We heard in some chatter about different teams that would be possible, and he said he really doesn't want to ride the 250, but it's either you don't be on the team or you get to be on the team and ride the 250. He said he would rather be on the team okay. than not be on it. But he said his big takeaway is if he goes or not, he just wants the three best riders to go, like you're saying, not the two 450 guys and a 250 guy. Just pick the three best guys and figure it out. But again, he was kind of leaning towards, hey, me and Eli are top two in the points right now. We should probably be selected. And then he's like, eventually, we just got to pick the three best guys and go with that. But he said if he would do it, it's his home state race. It's, he said it's going to be a big event. He was going to go last year until the team didn't end up not going. Right. So he's really pumped for it, home state race, everything. He's really looking forward to it. He said if he doesn't want to be on the 250, he'd prefer to be on the bike he's racing on, winning on now, leading the points. But he said if it comes down to it, he would ride the 250s. So. I think he and Tomek have earned the right to, to race 450s. And uh, 1, 2, 3 and 250 points are not American. So let's go with somebody from a 450 class like Jason Anderson. Uh, let's talk 250s. Go to the press conference. It's almost like the DNF for Jet Lawrence never happened. He won both motos today. Hunter Lawrence had terrible luck. And suddenly the points gap is bigger in Jet's direction than the deficit he had coming in. It's amazing. Let's get to the press conference. Just out of nowhere in the middle of the race, once you saw Jet was kind of, uh, I'd say, three seconds behind, you really started charging. Uh, talk me a little bit through that. Yeah, first moto, um, I had a good pace, but just struggled to pass the guys in the beginning. I'm, it's not like I was slow or something, it's just hard to pass. And yeah, once I got around them, uh, had a good pace, so I would catch. Um, Jet little by little, but then, yeah, last three, four lap, I got stuck behind lighters uh, four or five time, um, and that, well, you have to kind of like open the gap again and catch it, and then, yeah, that got me pretty tired to be honest. So, just have to keep working. <laughs> All right, Jet Lawrence won one for the day. I mean, it's a uh, you couldn't can't get any any better than that. So, uh, how are you going to celebrate? Probably going back. I mean, if, if this was the last round, I would be an absolute fat ass and just get heaps of food, but we're going to race next weekend. So we're going to go back, have a nice shower, because there's sand in spots that ain't supposed to be there. So we're going to have a shower, listen to some beats, you know, some music in the shower, find that good temperature, fall asleep till like 10 o'clock, then pass out in the bed. Fall asleep in the tub, then go, just transfer to the bed. Uh, <laughs> that second moto, um, did you know Kitchen was, well actually let's talk about that first moto because uh, you had a pretty good gap and then I noticed at one point you looked back and did you notice Joe, did you know that he was behind you before? Uh, I could see him coming a little bit, but okay I kept an eye on him and then I think I made a few mistakes and I looked back and I see he was like, I think it was only two seconds or three seconds, I'm like damn! And of course when I go to pick it up, I get hit in the... Uh, with like three lappers in the real tight section. They're all racing each other, so I uh, like got held up a bit more than he was right there, but I was able to, I think he might have got held up a little bit by them also, because they were going hard at it. And I just put my head down and sprinted to like a lap to go, and I kind of checked back again. I could see uh, he kind of threw the white flag, so I seen he came came from pretty fair ways back, so uh, it was good, because I'm like, okay, I need to start recovering this last lap, but um, yeah. Tell me how that, that must feel to you, especially bouncing back after last weekend. Yeah, last weekend we just uh, put ourselves in bad situations. I was I was like 30th both motos, so one first lap crash and then another really bad start. So we got two good starts today, and uh, we were able to just run up front and kind of see the pace today. Uh, the conditions were definitely tough. This is one of the toughest ones uh, of the year, physically demanding. And, uh, yeah, it was just fun to battle with the guys. Not, not really uh, – didn't really have the pace today, but it was fun to be up there and uh, – Especially in front of the hometown crowd, get on the box was was always always a good thing to be on the box and just uh, been struggling lately. So it's uh, good to you know be back on the podium. It's a, a step in the right direction. We've been working really hard as a team to you know to bridge that gap to the front, and uh, it's going to take some more work. But uh, we're, you know we're down for the challenge. The second moto was probably another shock I've ridden. Uh, I went seven seven on the day, qualified twelfth uh, I think. I went eleven ten for twelfth. Sometimes that's how it works, but uh, no, it's qualifying is a little like I didn't have anything special. I think I was kind of rushing a bit, and then uh, in the motos, 
first one I was kind of just there. I had not, no, nothing special. And the second one I was good at the beginning, ran four for a while, and then the anchor dropped, you know? <laughs> and uh, she was dragging, but all in all, it was a, it was a good day. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take full responsibility for, for coming over on Hunter. I honest mistake on my part. And uh, yeah, I was going to apologize, but you know, you know those things go. Um, so yeah, I'll take responsibility and uh, sorry, but uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I just want to clear things up. And yeah, it was my fault. I didn't see him at all. Vision here and, and the soft dirt, you know, it's, it's just hard to go straight. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the blame. Okay, let's talk Lawrence Brothers as usual here in the 250 class. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the cartoon G.I. Joe back in the day in the 80s, but they had these two brothers. They were twins, and I think one one's name was Xavier and one's name was Raviex. Xavier spelled backwards. They could feel each other's pain. So this year we had the Lawrence Brothers getting simultaneously sick at the beginning of the year, and now Southwick, we have the exact inverse of the results last year and this year. Hunter awesome last year, Jet awesome this year. It was kind of crazy how it worked out. Yeah, and I think uh, Jet pointed out in the press conference, Hunter went down with the Husqvarna rider. Styles Robertson this year lost his visor. Last year, first moto, Jet and Jalik Swole get together. His visor pops off a Husqvarna rider. So Jet ends up, I forget what he went uh, last year, not on the overall podium. And then Hunter goes 1-1 for his first overall win. So today, again, Husqvarna rider takes out Hunter. He loses his visor. There's no stats on that, but no visor. And then he, uh, Jet ends up going 1-1. So yeah, like you said, takes the points lead back and everything. It's just it's just a weird inc uh, coincidence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The two years are the exact same, except the other brother having the problem. And dude, after Moto One, like Robertson and Hunter, like literally getting out of it with each other, grabbing helmets and all. It was wild. Did you see that? I, I yeah. didn't see it live, but I saw Mike Emery got a photo. You can see these. Hunter is shaking the sand out of. I think that's, maybe that's what it was. He was just giving him the help. Of, hey, buddy, I'll shake. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he was roosting him, so he probably just. I'll shake this uh, oh. sand out of your helmet. So oh. yeah, there's some beef going on. I think. I don't know for sure, but I think Styles and him were the reason they kind of collided, went down. I think, like I said, I don't know whose fault it was exactly, but yeah. yeah. Then Hunter almost got clipped by two guys when he got up, so it was just a bad section of the track we went down. But yeah. Uh, we had a chance on our post-race show, which will be on MAV-TV on Tuesday, uh, Will Christian interviewed Darren, their dad, the Lawrence brothers' dad, and he said that they could never get the shock setting right for Hunter, and then the final motor, they just tried jet shock, and they don't ride the same. They're not the same height or weight, uh, so they tried that as a Hail Mary. It didn't work. Bad day all around for Hunter. Uh, well, uh, not even in the top five in either moto. Uh, Shimoda's still riding well. He finishes second. If he could go faster in the early laps, he could maybe challenge Jet. And your guy, Levi Kitchen. We got a Levi Kitchen sighting, bro. Yeah, I thought I wasn't going to say push it and go for the lead right away, but it's a uh, nice move to the inside on Justin Cooper. I thought, not that Justin Cooper is holding up, up, but you kind of see some of these guys, they get a good start, and there's still, like, one guy ahead of them that just they can't get around. But I think yeah. it was cool to see him run up there, and obviously he said, everybody says, like, if I get a start, I can run at that pace. But, like, he kind of proved that when he does get a start, he can run up there. And yeah. So, yeah, it was exciting to see him up there. And yeah. he held it. He held it through. Uh, I think he had one of the fastest laps early on of the whole uh, field, so that was pretty cool, and ended up finishing strong. Like, didn't some of these guys that get up there and they crashed away, but he right. rode smooth and came out, you know, second place. That was good. Yeah, because Shimoda was trying to get him toward the end, and he couldn't really make a dent. Uh, Levi had a bad start in Moto One, and said he was kind of spent, so he couldn't hang on the jet the whole way. But he's definitely shown. He's had two good starts and two good finishes. That's the way his summer has gone. Um, Let's get to our uh, new correspondent. Actually, if you want to talk to Levi Kitchen, we have a, a, a new member of the staff here for the best post show. All right, Tom, we're here at Southwick. I've got Levi Kitchen. He got second the second moto and fourth overall. Um, Levi, what'd you think about the track? Um, it's very hard and... All right, that was great. It was, uh, it was a really good race, Tom. Um, I got to interview you. All right, yeah, yeah, it, it was... Uh, it was just a great day. Great day for me. Yeah. Pretty good. First moto sucked. Here we go. Uh, AP third overall. Seven two on the day. Seven three. Seven three. Seven three. What do we think? Yeah, it was a great one. Uh, I was just out there flowing. Uh, first moto. I uh, ran out of tear offs and uh, I was just getting blasted, blasted. And um, you know, eventually, my shoulder was getting tired actually of tearing the tear offs off. So. Uh, yeah, track got rough. I got better and better and, uh, you know, ended up seventh the first moto and then got the start in the second one. And, um, you know, we cruised and that's, cruised that's and cruised. It's everything for me and AP, man, the yeah, start. Yeah, I mean, the start. I mean, you got, you got two tall, skinny freaking twigs out there. If you don't get a start, 
it's literally you get you're bounced getting, around, man. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're getting roosted. Mm -hmm. The draft isn't as good. Nope. Like, I mean, really. Yeah, our heads the stick best. over everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you can see us. The wind is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you don't get out there in front, like the aerodynamic is not. not it's good. not very good. Real question. One more question. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going for dinner tonight? Uh, I was thinking of either Cracker Barrel or Olive Garden, but okay. either way, I'm getting a uh, How about some you? How about you? Is it Tunxis Grill? It's like right in, right by the hotel, by the airport. It's pretty far. Oh, went, yeah. went last night. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to get a Shirley Temple, probably. Dude. Sounds pretty good. Honestly, you might have just made my mind up. For the Come to the grill, dude. Let's grill uh, out. Okay. I wish yeah. I had a barbecue, man. I'd chef yeah. it up. But. Yeah, dude. Well <laughs> all right, Tom. Hey, we're out. Back to you guys in the office. Okay, thank you, Aaron Plessinger. Doing it all. Podiums and interviews. Uh, better than me at both. Uh, Mitch, you're going to Millville. Uh, it's a track everybody loves, but uh, except you, because you've probably never even been there, right? Yeah, I'm not going this year. Kellen's going this year, too, but... Right. I'll be there spiritually. Okay, you'll be watching at home, and we'll see if Kellen Brower can do as well as you on the uh, best post show ever. Thanks to Twisted T. Thanks to you folks for watching. We'll see you at Millville.